California decided to get serious on tackling the issue of homelessness, and they have a really bold new proposal here. So the Associated Press explains, the country's homeless capital is gearing up to spend $2 billion to put an end to the crisis. As homeless figures continue to rise in areas throughout California, lawmakers are putting the finishing touches on a plan to tackle the problem nearly six months after it was first proposed. Back in January, senators introduced the idea of issuing $2 billion in bonds to provide at least 14,000 units to homeless people. The bonds would be repaid over about 20 to 30 years using funds from a millionaire's tax, which would raise taxes on millionaires by 1%. Now, uh, before the fiscal conservatives lose it, let's keep things in perspective. It's literally a 1% tax on millionaires. That's it. And for that, you get people off the streets. Seems like an easy trade-off, okay? But I know some people disagree. But that's why I give you more specifics here, and I bring the studies into the conversation. So, uh, quote, a recent study out of San Francisco found that the city saved 56% in expenses over the course of four years after housing for homeless people. Another study out of Florida found, quote, uh, leaving a homeless person on the streets costs $31,065. Giving them housing costs $10,051. So in other words, this isn't an open question. It's not like we're having a hard time figuring it out. We know as a matter of fact, based on numerous studies, I just gave you two of them here, that you actually save massive amounts of money if you just put a roof over the head of homeless people. Now, look, don't get me wrong, I'm actually a slightly more conservative than some liberals on this issue, in the sense that I think if you're going to give homeless people a, you know, a place to sleep at night with a roof over their head, you have to make it like a one-room apartment, bare bones, not many furnishings, and it's just like, it can't be better than anything that other people are paying for. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's got to be, uh, as the old saying about the minimum wage goes, a floor, not a bed. So it's got to be like, okay, you're, you're homeless. We're not going to leave you behind because we're not barbarians and savages. But here's a, a one-bedroom apartment, uh, bare, bare bones, not many furnishings. You know, obviously you have the necessities that anybody would need. You got a toilet, you got a refrigerator, you got a bed. But we're not going to put a TV in there. We're not going to give you a facility that has a fucking pool that you can go to, a community pool and shit like that. You know, it's going to be a small one-bedroom apartment that allows you to sleep at night with a roof over your head. It's obviously going to have, you know, uh, air conditioning and heating. But outside of that, no, I'm not going to go... Anything that somebody pays for has to be better because they're fucking paying for it, okay? So in that sense, maybe I'm slightly more conservative than other liberals. But look, the facts speak for themselves. The numbers speak for themselves. It's, it's just a reality that you save money when you house them as opposed to when you don't house them. So it would make fiscal sense, economic sense, not just moral and ethical sense, which it makes that too, but it makes fiscal and economic sense to, to give these people a place to stay. So uh, there is no counter argument. Now, some people would say, well, wait a second. How is that the case? It's actually very simple. The answer is very simple. When homeless people are out on the streets, what ends up happening? Shit happens, right? So people end up in jail. That costs money. People end up in prisons. That costs money. People end up in mental institutions. That costs money. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of things that happen that add up and cost the taxpayer money. When homeless people are on the streets, they end up going to the hospital much more. When they go to the hospital much more, the taxpayers are footing that bill. So, uh, when people crunch the numbers and get serious about it, they go, oh yeah, no, if you just give them a place to stay, give them a roof over their head, doesn't have to be much, but give them a roof over their head, well then, the, the government actually saves money in the long run. So, uh, this isn't even difficult for me. Like, this isn't hard at all. If we can find, at a federal level, if we can find... Seven trillion dollars for an unnecessary war in Iraq? Remember, by 2053, that's what it costs. As of right now, it costs about two trillion. When you add in all the interest and everything, when you stretch out the stretch it out over time, it's gonna cost seven trillion. We have that money for that. We have over ten trillion dollars for the bailout of Wall Street after the crash. 
We have all endless money for pork barrel spending and corporate welfare, $4 billion a year for ExxonMobil, for a subsidy for them for research and development, even though they're one of the most profitable corporations on the planet. We have all that money for all that nonsense, but we can't muster together less money, we'll save money, <laughs> to do a program to put a roof over the head of homeless people. No, it's just because you don't want to, and the government doesn't care, because the government is bought by the corporations. So the government's busy doing the bidding of the corporations, because they're all bought. But if we just had basic interest, just minimal level interest of, of the constituents, the people in the United States of America, you could solve this problem overnight, dude. You could pass the legislation overnight and within a month have everything taken care of. At worst, a year if you have to build more projects instead of finding projects to, to put people uh, into the buildings. So it's not a hard question. It's not a hard question at all. It's actually a very simple question. I applaud the states that are doing it on a state-by-state -state basis, but the federal government's got to get involved. By the way, I'll give you one more fact here. Actually, technically, two more facts. There's 49,933 homeless veterans in the United States. Now, this number is as of 2014. So it may have went down a little bit. It went, may have went up a little bit. But this is as of 2014, 49,933 homeless vets. <laughs> and this is from a country where we say, support our troops. How's that for supporting your troops? You can't just say that when it comes to sending them to fight and die in unnecessary wars. You actually need to do it when they come back and they need your help. Nearly 50,000 troops are homeless. That's a shame. That's a national embarrassment. And overall, how many just Americans in general are homeless? 578,424. Dude, I'll say it again, it ain't that hard to fix this problem. This is a national disgrace, and all you need to do is save money, spend less money, and give them a roof over their head. Do it.